Well, good morning. This is Paul Check with another one of my video blogs. We've uh, started this week with uh, Arnold Patton's Universal Principle number 10 on non judgment. Then my next video blog was a, an excerpt from one of Rumi's poems talking about <laughs> the importance of you keeping your soul on top of the donkey and not letting the donkey become uh, filtration lenses that the poor soul has to look through. And today I'd like to share a little insight from a great little book called Universal Sufism by Dr. H.J. Witteven, I believe is the way the name is spelled. W-I-T-T-E-V-E-E-N, Witteven. Universal Sufism, Dr. H.J. Witteven. Today, I'm inspired to read to you from page six. So here's a little quote, a little comment out of this book, and then I'll share some feelings about it. For those of you that don't really understand what Sufism is, Sufism is the mystical branch of Islam, just like the Kabbalah is the mystical branch of Judaism, and Rosicrucians and other select groups, some feel the Gnostics, uh, and others were the mystical branch of Christianity. Personally, I love Sufism. I love the Kabbalah. I even love Christ Christian mysticism because it's free of all the uh, <laughs> donkey stuff. So um, the donkey stuff's good when you need it. Children need donkey stuff. They need to be told what to do because they don't have enough awareness or life skills. But once you become an adult, a lot of that laborious should and shouldn't weighs the soul down in my observation. So when you get to Sufism, Kabbalah, and the mystical branches of most religions, you get to a much more spiritually free, but much more adult philosophy, where you have to be brave enough to accept that you're beyond what your previous thoughts were. In other words, your judgments that you once held no longer serve you. Therefore, in order to enter into one of the mystical practices, you have to be brave enough to let go of the conditioned beliefs that often preceded the desire for a mystical practice. So today we're entering into a story, but there's a key little tidbit I want to share here. Here the story of Moses, Moses' ascent of Mount Sinai, is that on arriving at the summit he saw a flash of lightning which was so f powerful it went through his whole being. Moses fell down unconscious and when he recovered his senses he found himself in a state of illumination. Inyat Khan explains that this shows that it can be possible for illumination to come to a soul in a moment. And there's a little pause before I read on. Hazrat Inyat Khan is a famous Sufi master, and all of his books are fantastic. If you want to look up the Sufi teachings by Hazrat Inyat Khan, I think you'd be well, well rewarded for looking at any of his works. So Inyat Khan goes on by explaining, and Moses falling upon the ground may be interpreted as the cross, which means, I am not, thou art. In order to be, one must pass through a state of being nothing. In Sufi terms, this is called fauna. When one thinks, I am not what I had always thought myself to be. This is the true self-denial, which the Hindus call layam and the Buddhists call annihilation. It is the annihilation of the false self which give rise to the true self. Once this is done, from that moment man approaches closer and closer to God until he stands face to face with his divine ideal which he can communicate with which he can communicate at every moment of his life. So there's some key points being made in there that I would like to just elaborate a little bit. First of all, what we're being told is that in order to be one mass must pass through a state of non-being. We're going through that quite often. We're finding that the things that we thought we were either don't nourish us or 
that maybe our ideas were not really accurate to our experience. So maybe we think we're a great singer, but keep finding ourselves not doing well in singing competitions, or we're a great dancer, but people don't seem to be that excited about our dancing. So these things are all just ways we learn more about ourselves, and we're able to reference the opinions of our own self relative to our experience and the opinions of others relative to our experience. In order to be, we must not be. Well, we go to sleep every night and go into a complete state of unconscious with regard to our knowing of ourselves as being this or being that, which is essential for us to recover the energy and detach ourselves from the uh, ego structure of belief systems, which is largely stressful to most people. Most people deal with a tremendous amount of stress on a daily basis around their own accepted beliefs, let alone the beliefs of others. So, in the end, they're, they're speaking of annihilation of the false self, which gives rise to the true self. The false self here is that which is other than love. That The false self is that which separates us from all that is. So, to the degree that a person thinks that the earth is just a place, a pile of rocks, and we can trash the place, and doesn't matter, we're all going to die anyhow, they're separating themselves from the larger self that they are, the universe, of which the earth is a part of. So those types of beliefs would be more in line with the concept of the false self. The false self is the judging self that sees somebody else as less than or separate from you or even more than you if it's demeaning to you. What you'll see is that as we grow and mature, first we have to learn how to live through sex and violence love, which means figuring out how a body works and how relationships work and the pains involved in that. Then we realize that we need to upgrade to conditional love, love that works in a given relationship or in a given group or in a given environment, such as the military, there's conditions, such as businesses, there's conditions, relationships, conditions, marriage contracts, conditions rental contracts, conditions. We find if we don't have some kind of conditional love, then there's no agreement upon what is and what isn't acceptable sex and violence love. Renting someone's home, throwing parties, and smashing the walls and the windows because you're stoned and drunk is sex and violence love if your rental contract gives you conditions that you agree upon which you will not do such things. So as we mature, through the realm of sex and violence love to conditional love and we finally realize that even conditions won't help people live more fully even when they're signed their name to it if they're not really open to doing it out of an authentic self-love or love of other then each of these steps turns out to be stages in self-awareness once we go through sex and violence and conditional love we get to empathetic and compassionate love and empathy means to feel the other, and compassion means to understand the other. So here you see something interesting. To have empathy or compassion, you actually have to bring that person into your space. For me to feel your pain or your challenge, I've got to be strong enough and brave enough as a person to allow myself to be present with your situation, your emotions, your experiences, and your feelings. That's quite a high state of loving. When we start loving empathetically and compassionately, we come to realize that there's something of each one of us in somebody else. Their pain is somehow our pain. Their pain is somehow related to uh, experiences and challenges that we've had. Therefore, we can have empathy for them. If you've gone through a divorce, you can have compassion for someone going for, through a divorce Therefore, we can connect to them. Once you start living progressively more empathetically and compassionately, and I mean in relationship to nature, in relationship to yourself, in relationship to others, I find that you realize more and more of your prior conditioning. 
and even things that you thought were true about your body or sex or money or whatever all turns out to be very very um, elusive and very very limiting it may have served you at one point but it, it, it actually often has a double bind in the beginning of your life you're usually working your ass off to make money so you feel safe and secure but many 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 of my clients have lots of money and have worked their whole life to acquire what they thought would make them safe and secure but here they are coming to me with diseases broken families unhappiness and it's as though they don't have the money at all when it comes to actually what they thought they were going to get from the money so we see that we create these ideas and we have to work through the barriers that the idea creates to the degree it creates freedom it almost always creates an equal amount of restriction which is necessary for our own growth so in conclusion these little acts of enlightenment like getting struck down by lightning and waking up in an illumined, illumined state you can get struck down by a divorce wake up in an illuminated state you can get struck down by a bankruptcy and all of a sudden a year later realize you're going to be okay and that you learned a tremendous amount from that painful experience and that many of the ideas that you used to swear by with regard to business money management employee management are no longer authentic and you would not use them again because your experience brought you into contact with people places and things that illuminated you enlightened you and showed you a new way of doing in conclusion each time we have one of these experiences we realize that a lot of our ideas that we put so much time and energy into reinforcing and believing just aren't true and we become a little bit more illuminated each step of the way I don't think there's a better practice because ultimately I know my goal is to have the experience each day as often as I can of what consciousness really is and what love really is so that at least I know that I lived a life based in something more important than money, rules, regulations, schedules, etc. And ultimately, climbing through these stages of self-awareness leads to a sense that you're always safe, that you're always home, and that you'll always be okay. And that creates the deepest sense of peace inside of me that I could ever imagine and gives me the willingness to share these kinds of experiences with other people. So I look forward to sharing with you another time. Hope you enjoyed today's blog and remember to question your own thoughts and stay on top of that ego and take advantage of each moment of enlightening and hopefully it won't take a lightning strike. See you soon.